Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. My name is Albert. I'm Winston. And I'm John Matthews. Our project starts with a menu screen with a Squid Game cutscene in the background for a more visually entertaining experience for the user. There is a video introduction for about 10 seconds before the user can start the game. The menu screen has two buttons, Start and Instructions. Let's press the Instructions button so we can explain how our game works. Notice stop when any button is pressed, there is a sound effect. Pressing the Instructions button leads to another screen showing the written instructions with an image in the background. And this screen says how our dice game works. In our game, the objective is simple, to get the most points. The points are awarded based on rolling dice during each round of the game. And then the winner of the game is the player who has the most points when all the rows are over and added up throughout the rounds. However, our game has a twist. Just like the Squid Game show, our game is extremely unpredictable. The amounts of rounds each game can be between 5 and 10, with the number of rounds being num randomly being chosen by the program when the game starts. On top of this, in each round, the players get either 1, 2, or 3 dice to roll, which also depends on the random choice of the program. The scores of each round are shown in a table, and whoever who has the largest sum in the end will win the game. In the case of a tie, extra rounds will be added until a, the tie will be broken. Now, let's press the back button to go back to the menu screen and play the game. We are back at the menu screen now, and we'll press the play button to get to the main game screen. Now that we've made it to the game screen, we can see the components we were describing in the instruction section. There's a table in the middle of the screen that shows the randomly generated amount of rounds and has two columns for player 1 and player 2, or the CPU. We can also see a slider that controls the spin speed of the dice, which is one of our reach features. The dirt background is meant to represent the service players in the show Squid Games roll their dice on. Now let's start playing the game. We start the game by pressing the roll button, and then you can hear the sound effects of the dice rolling. The speed and intensity of the sound effects depends on how the user places the slider. When you're getting incrementally faster and more intense, if there's a higher value in the spin power, then the animation pops up when the dice rolls and shows the value after spinning the round. Also know that there's a random number of dice between 1 and 3 each round, which will be illustrated more throughout the game. There are f a few more special features that we added as well. If a 6 is rolled, there is a special sound effect added which denotes a success. An additional feature is that if the spin slider is set to 0, it shows an image of a sad face because there's no spin. After a round is over, the rules for the round are added up and placed into the table, which allows the players to keep track of the score easily. The sum of the current scores shows up at the bottom of the table during the game, so that the players can compare their scores. When all of the rounds are over, the player with the largest sum will win a game. If the player is on the screen wins, they will receive a sound effect for winning, as well as the constant that ends, you win screen. We also have, have a cutscene in the scenario that the player loses and ends with a game over screen. For the two player mode, the second player now becomes the CPU. Here's a playthrough.
Now that we have done a run through of the game, let's look at the code. In our methods, you see the functions that uh, we use to make the game work. The first function is the animation function. And this function, we use the switch with six different cases with six different MP3s and video files to simulate six different options when rolling a die. As you can see, case six includes a special sound effect when rolling a six. The next function is the randomize function, which sets the rounds to a number between five and 10 using randy. The final function before we reach the callback functions that are related to the components is the roll dice function. First, you can see how we randomly choose a number of dice between one and three. With the data table component being brought up, we sum up all of the rolls if there is more than one dice. If you look below, the function uses ifs and else ifs to set up the visuals based on the number of guys per round. Now, we'll move on to the callback functions for components. The first callback function is the startup function. In this function, we'll make everything invisible except the start button, instructions button, and the video in the background, which is controlled by the while loop and is turned off when any button is pressed. The next callback function is for when the player one or two button is pressed. The press of a button turns on the sound effect and it makes the roll button, slider, and table visible. As you can see, the table is set to have an amount of rounds that are randomly generated, plus another row for the sums. The next callback function is for when the start button is pushed. The video stops and the button press sound effect is played. It makes the player one and player two button shows on the next screen. The next callback function is for when the roll button is pressed. As you can see, we used if loops based on the value of the slider to determine which sound effect is played when the roll button is pressed. A higher number on the slider is the normal speed, while the lower numbers have slowed down versions played. Underneath, you can see a for loop that is used to transfer the data into a table. Finally, there's another if loop at the bottom for the last column that compares the final scores of the two players. If the player's score is greater than the other player, the winning sound effect and screen shows up, but if they lose, then the losing screen shows up. Right below this, in the else section, is the code that adds an extra round in the event of a tie. The next callback function is for when the instruction button is pressed. The video stops, and we make the instruction text area visible while removing the previous background. The final callback function for when the back button is pushed. The button in the next text area disappears, and the start and instructions button appear again on the screen. In a two-player mode, I created a variable called TikTok, and which is for determining who is the player one and who is the player two. So when when you the first player clicks the two-player code button, it will update the TikTok to one, which sets it to player one. And after that, the second player clicks with when it clicks the two-player code two-player button, they will get send that information to the TikTok. They will receive its one, and they will add it to two, so you get the second player. And during the two-player mode, every every round we play, when we send the information back, we're gonna send from set the TikTok from two to one and one to two. That way, it will switch the player's round. When the TikTok is one, the player one cannot move. When the TikTok is two, and then the player two can move. But when the TikTok is set to two, the player one can move. The player two cannot move. For responsibilities, I was in charge of the callback function for the play button, callback function for the dice rolling, callback function for the slider, and coding the win page. I was in charge of creating the callback functions of the scoreboard, round number generator, dice number generator, and the 3D modeling of the dice. I was in charge of the code for sound effects, code for the visuals, and dice animations, and creating this video you're watching right now. I'm Albert. I'm Winston. And I'm John. And thank, thank you, you for, for watching. watching.